Hi guys, Hockey Dad Kevin here. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these, which is my poor man's dangle puck or DIY dangle puck. And here are the list of pieces that you're going to need, or the list of tools. First of all, you're going to need access to either a drill press or a drill guide. As you can tell, I've actually fastened my drill guide down to a piece of uh, wood or particle board. Uh, you'll need, obviously, a puck. Uh, you can buy these pucks by the box. I bought them, I'm in Canada, and so I bought this box, a box of 30 for about $35, I believe. So, relatively cheap. Um, you will need a load transfer bearing. Before you buy your load transfer bearing, make sure you buy the stainless steel model. This is the stainless steel model. Okay? You want a stainless steel ball or you don't want the carbon steel version. As you can tell, the carbon steel doesn't roll nearly as nice. And because of that, the puck won't roll very nice. And it's a lot of resistance when you're actually using it. So, don't make my mistake. I bought the carbon steel first, cheaping out. And it ended up being that the stainless steel version was the better choice. And that's why spend a little extra and it'll be better. Right? You will need a 23 millimeter Forstner bit. It looks like this. Okay. Mine will have, you'll see if you look very closely, you'll see 23 there. It's upside down. 23. And you will need a 32 millimeter Forstner bit. Okay. You need a pin punch vernier caliper and a small size drill bit right there if you can see that's this is my this is the rig that i use to create my dangle pucks all right and give me a second and i'll have it all set up so here's my setup i have a puck that's already clamped in there and you're gonna take your small drill bit and you're gonna drill a hole straight down straight through So the hole serves as two purposes. It's going to allow you to check the center. And on top of that, it's going to allow you, a, allow you to use the pin punch later on if you need to remove the bearing. So you can use the pin punch through the, through the back and you can tap out the bearing if the bearing ever gets ruined. I'm going to clean this up and we'll change bits. Cleaned it up, and now I've attached the 24, sorry, the 23 millimeter Forstner bit, and I'm going to drill down. Clean this up, and I'll change bits again. I usually drill down about 18 to 19 millimeters. Um, don't worry about it being too deep, because just as long as you don't go th through all the way, you should be okay, because if you go down a little bit too deep, say the bearing doesn't sit, it sits too deep, you can always offset it with, a little, with some washers. Um, you can actually use even like spare change, like a nickel, and it should be fine. All right, I'm going to clean this up and switch the bit again. All right, so I switched the bit to the 32 millimeter Forstner bit, and I'm going to drill down to approximately one, I think, or rather almost one centimeter. Usually I go to the, almost to the top of the height of the bit. It seems to be, it seems to work for me. It doesn't have to be exact. You can go at a slow speed or you can go at a higher speed. I just don't like the mess. That seems to be okay. 
I'm gonna clean it up and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so here we have the finished puck. You can see that there's a hole that you can use a pin punch so you can push the bearing out in case it uh, gets stuck in there. Um, so you can take your load transfer bearing. Sometimes it's a little loose, so I actually wrap a little bit of hockey tape because which hockey player doesn't have shin guard tape? All right, and you just take it and you push it in. It's a little hard to go in. Then you actually take a spark plug socket, a 1316 spark plug socket, and you can push it in that way, or you can use I have a dead blow hammer that could do the same trick. But from there, you press, usually it goes in pretty good. And then you can see that you get a little bit, All right? You can always adjust the height by drilling with the 23 millimeter a little bit low, a little bit deeper, just so you can get that height. And you can always use, you can use washers to offset it. So the final step of this is I actually take hockey tape, shin guard tape again, and wrap it around the vulcanized rubber of, an, of a genuine puck, of a real puck. You can, it sticks to your blade a little bit too much for my liking, but it's all up to you. And I just tape the sides, the side to reduce the friction as you can see here. And that's how you make your DIY dangle puck. I'll show you in a bit uh, how well it slides. So here's the new one I just, we just made. As you can see, I haven't taped it up yet. If you wanna see how well it slides. All right, it slides pretty well. And here's the original dangle puck. All right. And there you have it. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you have any questions, leave them below. I can even give you a list of building materials that you that I've used that I used to make this. Okay? All right. Thanks again for watching.